Hi guys, I'm Hannah Lanningham, a senior accounting major at Queens. And if you don't know by now, I am doing my capstone on the zero waste movement, but I like to refer to it as the low waste movement, and I'll explain explain that to you in a little bit. First off, what is the problem that I'm that we are trying to solve and why is it a global issue? Well, 3.5 million tons of trash are produced daily globally. And that's predicted to increase by 5.0 million tons by the end of our century in 2100. The average American throws away 1,500 pounds of waste per year. And the landfill is responsible for 15.1% of our of the United States methane emission. That's a third of our methane emissions. And there are five garbage patches distributed within our oceans that is causing great harm to our ecosystems and our animals. Why is this an issue? Well, why is there so much trash in the landfill? Well, that's because single-use products are made for convenience. Why is that? It saves time and money for consumers. Well, why is that? The other alternative, which is reusables, costs more money up front and it takes more time to sanitize and clean those products per use. Well, why is that? Big businesses have taken advantage, have taken advantage of their consumers and single use and plastic materials and are leaving out the environmental costs of the products that they produce. This is where the zero waste movement comes in and came about. The original challenge, which is really where it all started, was to fit all of the trash you produce within a year into a mason jar. So essentially the challenge was to fit, to be able to fit the trash you produce in a year in a mason jar. Now my goal for the zero waste movement is to reduce the amount of trash that ends up in the landfill by 50% in the United States by the end of the 21st century. Really the Zero waste movement's goal would probably be to have people produce no waste. Um, however, I find that kind of in a, in, impossible and not realistic and kind of creates a perfectionist society, which is kind of one of the flaws currently of the zero waste movement. Um, but its objectives are to really raise awareness and educate people about why they're being, they're doing what they're doing and why it's so important. So how I really got started was because of these three influencers and really where I became really knowledgeable and educated from. First off is Lauren Singer, who is the CEO of Pack the Tree. She's actually fit all of her trash produced from seven years into one mason jar. I think she has some tricks and strategies for that one. Um, Dolby, who's a sustainable vlogger, you can see her YouTube channel page right here. And Chrissy Sedona, who is a video creator, she um, creates content as well as podcasts up on vegan wellness, slow fashion, and a perfectly low waist. Um, and you can see her Instagram um, kind of page here. Um, I want to start, first off, start by telling you guys the trash life cycle. So first, raw materials are produced, transported, distributed, and sold to consumers. Those items are used and thrown into a collection bin by those consumers. The bin is collected by a garbage truck and transported to the transfer station. Waste is distributed into the landfill and dumped into a hole. There, the trash sits and, and decomposes very slowly. That trash leaks its minerals and chemicals into the soil. Um, as you notice in this graphic here, um, leather belts take 50 years, batteries take 100 years to decompose. Diapers take 450 years, menstrual products take 500, 500 to 800 years to decompose, and guess what? Plastics don't quite ever decompose. They, they are mineral microplastics, and they don't go into, they never de biodegrade, you know? It's, it's a really terrible thing that ends up into our water, and it really, you can't get rid of it. Cycling 101, this is where I want to tell you about how recycling works. Uh, so single stream recycling process, first appropriate recycling materials are placed into the common bin, aka your recycling bin. Um, waste management retrieves the recycling bin from all residents, which is then transported to local stream facility, streamlined facility. Materials are uploaded and inspected before entering the conveyor belt, they're also pre-sorted and all of the unrecyclable items are removed. On the conveyor belt, they're processed through screens into separate piles of similar materials. 
similar materials are stored in bunkers where they are inspected finally and sent off to be made into renewable materials packed into bale and sold to market. Here's the problem with recycling. It still produces waste. A lot of people aspirationally recycle, meaning they really don't know whether things can go into the recycling bin, like receipts can't go in, and they just recycle it, hoping that it can be recycled when it really just ends up in the landfill anyways. There's also, if you didn't know, plastic bags, like your grocery bags, cannot be recycled because it entangles the machines in the single, single streamlined process, which can damage and cause like over a lots of money to these machines and um, the facilitators. It's a linear process, which means it's, it's just not a good process. And only 9% of the items that have been put into recycling thus far have actually been recycled. That's a really, really low stat. Essentially, recycling is just a band-aid. It should really be the last line instead of the first line that we were taught in elementary school. So here's, I'm going to teach you some new things. This is what is now the five R's instead of the seven R or the three R's that we were taught. Um, first off is refuse what you do not need. Really think about that. Really think about what you're bringing in and consuming. Reduce what you do need. Reuse what you consume. Recycle what you cannot refuse, reduce, or reuse. And then rot, which is compost. Um, notice that there isn't really anything that goes into the waste or the landfill within this triangle. And then this is the Biarchy of Needs, which came out of a Zero Waste book. Um, it's a really great one. It's a really great illustration. So essentially, you start off with using what you have, like asking yourself, do I really need to buy it to get something new? If you do, why don't you borrow it or swap with somebody? Can you find it at the thrift store? Can you make it yourself? And lastly, buy it new if you have no other alternatives. So here are my solutions to our landfill problem on a local level. Reusables. Um, so a reusable water can cost anywhere between $2 to $40 if you want that hydro flask, but they save 1,460 plastic water bottles per year per person from entering the landfill and creating those microplastics. A safety razor is a great alternative um, to those disposable razors that you're throwing out, you know, every two weeks to every two months. And it's just exchanging the blades instead of throwing out a whole razor. Um, and the blades cost 10 cents each. And it's really easy to use. And it's a great shape. Um, plastic totes or bags can replace 100 billion plastic bags per year globally. Um, and then these pictures are from Good Earth Essentials, which um, I interviewed the owners, Emily and Tatiana, who are, are this, this is a local zero waste shop here in Charlotte, downtown area. A great little cute, quaint place. They sell soaps, which replace, you know, your plastic body wash bottles. Um, dish brushes, which have, um, they replace, you know, your dish, like your normal plastic brushes. Um, but these can be composted. They don't produce any waste. And then you have beeswax down here, which uh, replaces plastic wrap or um, tin foil. You can reuse it and wash it over and over again. Snack bags. Um, they've got uh, lots of great stuff. You should totally check them out. These are also their refillables, which are lotions, body washes, and facial creams, which um, if you bring it, when you bring in your own glass, like I did, as you can see from a lemonade glass, you are buying in bulk with a great, you're not using any more plastics than need be. And you're also saving these businesses because they only have to, you know, they're reusing their bulk material too and consuming less plastics. Lastly, my um, last solution is composting. Composting can reduce waste sent to the landfill by at least 30%. Um, a lot of the, the materials that we're sending are food scraps, and these food scraps are great products for soil. You know, um, when you send it, when you compost, you can use food scraps, eggshells, ca cardboard leaves, biodegradable, biodegradable materials, and paper products. So food scraps aren't good in the landfill because they can't biodegrade by themselves because they don't have what the chemicals that they need to be able to biodegrade because they're so compacted into the landfill that they're not getting enough oxygen. Um, 
And composting is a great sustainable solution because it creates rich, fertilized soil for plants. So it's just an all around circular system that, you know, you can just do it over and over again and it's great for the planet and the earth. It's the way it was supposed to be. Now here are my three takeaways that I want you to take. Always remember, climate change is not going anywhere. Big corporations own and are a huge chunk of the waste problem. They should be held responsible for the products that they're producing and selling to consumers. That's a lot of what is going on here. You know, you got Coca-Cola who has a lot of aluminum cans and bottles out there that are just ending up in our oceans and the litter and in the landfills. Um, be aware of what you're buying and consuming and producing into your home. Um, and ask yourself, do I really need this? Is there any way I can reuse it before throwing it away? Um, can I find that at a thrift store and save some money? And do your part in, our, in trying to save our earth. Um, and I want to leave you with a little motivational quote here. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And that is a quote by Margaret Mead. Here's more excited page. I just want to say thank you guys for all your support this semester. I hope you guys have a great holiday and enjoy.